Scarves are so competitive in the midfield. We've, we've given McLaren a separate video mm-hmm. because they're doing so well, but can't really separate them too far from no. the fight between Force India, Williams, Haas, Toro Rosso. It's very, it's great racing down there. No wonder we see so much, much of it on the world feed now. Williams, interesting year. Mm. Haven't really made a lot of progress with the car from last year. They seem to be very good on circuits with long straights still, as we saw in Malaysia, but mm-hmm. they're going to be struggling when it gets to any sort of circuit with, with slow corners still. You, we've said before we're surprised by that. Are they making progress in, in any area? Do you I, think? I don't think they're... I think they've completely shut off and are focused on to 2017 is, is the sort of feeling I'm getting. And, you know, certainly some people I know attached to the team are sort of suggesting that. But, you know, there's a championship on this year. And, you know, well, they, they, and they are... they have to know why they're slow as well. And, um, well you know. Which is why McLaren, for example, are still pushing. They want to understand what they need to do to yeah. get that car to work. Williams seems to have, I hate to use the word stagnated, but you know, the car since 2014 really hasn't come on. Its performance at different types of track hasn't varied that much. Their understanding of the tyres equally seems to be one of the things that's the root of certainly their race pace because we do see the drivers just drift away during the race and what starts out mm. as a fifth position will end up being a seventh or an eighth. And it's like, yeah. oh, I thought the driver would be able to pull a better result in that. So it's a bit baffling, but equally, you know, they are balancing very limited resources. I mean, we still think of Williams as this massive team, but they don't have the, you know, the funding to run two big design departments. But nonetheless, not the same resources as Force India, who are doing a great job. No, exactly. And Force India, you know, have forever, you know, since Jordan came out in 1991, have always run with very tight budgets. And all of the engineers that have come out of there have always been lots of the the best engineers into other uh, teams because they know how to get performance without you know just mm. blowing the budget on trying everything and they're very good at pinpointing things and the force india certainly has since it had its um, b spec uh, update mid season really has been the car that's had the pace in the midfield and is getting these race results in again partly because of their strategy and how they like to run their tires both drivers doing great jobs getting the car in the points consistently, race after race, and that's bringing them the championship. Sort of mini version of Mercedes in a way, in terms yeah, of their operation. Yeah, I mean, in terms of its management. operation this year, yeah. you have to say that you can't Superb. often see when Force India have made a mistake or when any part of the operation, you know, admittedly the start of the season was difficult, but that's, you know, funding led rather than any lack of skill. You know, they still produced a pretty good car at the start of the year with, you know, with, with, during very tough times for the team. And it's just, you know, it's gone from strength yeah. to strength. And what's impressive about Force India is when they know they're going to a circuit where they're going to have problems, they work around that very efficiently and, and minimise the downsides so yeah, well. And exactly. They, and again, very realistic. the show is very much in their race strategies as well. Haas, interesting brake failure on, interesting, it's probably not the word Roma yet, <laughs> but brake failure on Roma's car early on in uh, yes. unusual these days, again. It is unusual and it has been a problem that Haas have had sort of throughout the year, increasing throughout the year is you know the brake by, by wire, wire system it started in Barcelona feel, and exactly a, yeah. uh, and getting that sorted and I think this is you know partly the growing pains of the way that Haas have entered the sport as we know you know they're an independent team but they've bought the mechanical package from Ferrari and that is very much just buying the physical parts they're not buying Ferrari's know-how so Ferrari won't give them the, the software code for the brake by wire they won't tell them how to set the car up and how to go racing at the beginning of the year, the car was very good out of the box. We saw those great results. Mm. But now, as they're having to unpick and learn and solve all of these little issues that are cropping up in the car, you know, they're, 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 the newness of the team and the lack of experience that they've got with the parts that are there, because obviously they're not their own parts, is starting to show. And obviously, Ferrari can't just step in and go, <clears throat> here's how to do it, because that's against the regulations. So, yeah. you know, the, the way that's allowed them to enter the sport at a reasonable you know, price point does come back and bite them and it's going to take them you know like any other team some time to mature and understand all of these issues and just recap for us how they're approaching 2017 how are they building the 2017 car well 2017 is exactly the same as it has been for this year so ferrari will deliver all of the parts that are allowed under the regulations which is pretty much the mechanical package Mm -hmm. suspension um gearbox engine um, hydraulics, systems like that, which then leaves it for Haas to create all of what they call bodywork, which strangely includes radiators, which I never t- completely understood. Um, so they have to design the aero package for the car, and they have to d- design the other structural parts, which is the you know, the monocoque tub, the crash structures at the side, the crash structure on the nose, and the one at the tail. So there's a huge amount of work still for them to do, partic- obviously particularly around the um, 
aero side, but bearing in mind the regulation changes. So the, the way they approach the sport next year won't change. So and when will it have to change? Uh, at the moment, um, they uh, are an open mind about how they want to go forwards. The regulations, as we see, aren't changing. So they could continue, as far as we can see at the moment, indefinitely on this um, allowed parts uh, regulation. But they were allowed this to facilitate their entry into Formula One, to make it... The regulations don't say you can only do that for three years, then you have to make everything... Well, it's going to be, when they start going really well, other teams are going to start... Yeah, I think, sure. I think inevitably Haas's ambitions, as, which I think have been quite clear from the start, that they want to be a competitive team, means that at some point they'll have to take the leap from receiving customer parts to manufacturing everything themselves, or designing yeah. and then manufacturing everything themselves. So they will take that jump, but at this stage they're not... Uh, wanting to say when that will be and the regulations aren't forcing them to do it right. so it's a kind of an open uh, question at the moment we don't know but I think they will eventually start to go that way maybe not with everything in one year maybe they'll keep for an hour suspension but then just design everything else something like that we all knew that it would become increasingly difficult for Toro Rosso with the 2015 Ferrari engine mm -hmm. no development at all on that power unit as no. the seasons develop but actually the last couple of races they've really got it together nicely Daniel Kubiat has really got into the the swing of things again, and some good drives by Carlos Sainz. Exactly. I mean, the, the year-old Ferrari engine is still a good engine by by anyone's standards, so they, they, that's not a problem. But it is obviously below par with everyone else, and they, they made the most of the early season. We saw some great results from them. Maybe the team weren't operating quite as well as they could, but, you know, they've got John Booth there and various mm. other uh, people now uh, going to join the team. Um, but then they had that kind of the update to the car, this big B-spec, which kind of wrong-footed them through the mid-season and this this update didn't provide the performance they were expecting it transpires from what we understand is that it created too much drag more than they expected and which, what, what were the main features of that update well the, it was pretty much everything there was you know front wings side pods engine cover the cooling package the rear wing diffuse it was pretty much everything they could change on the car was changed uh, and over the past few races they've back to backed uh, the two specifications and I think they've kind of resolved where they are we had a new rear wing at Malaysia uh, now the rear wing is important for Toro Rosso because they lack power compared with their rivals. They have to run less drag, but obviously they still won't have downforce for the corner. So we saw this quite interesting curved rear wing that was introduced at the last race that seemed to work quite well for them. And I think you know maybe now that they've sorted out the you know, the driver situation again was an upset mid-season. The aero package is sorted. They understand their drag levels. Um, yeah, they should have quite a strong end to the season. You know we. we the car is fundamentally is very good, uh, and they've got you know very good drivers. And I think of particularly Carlos Sainz this year. You know that could have been knocked really badly by the uh, you know the promotion of Verstappen. He's really kind of stepped up, and he's he's been a very yeah, strong. He's race matched driver. his natural pace with the ability to finish races now. Exactly, that's, yeah. that's a big progress for him. Renault. Mm. Nice to see Jolly and Palmer in the points. Uh, yes. Not the first points they've scored this year, of course, but good to see Palmer in the points as yep. well. He's pretty much on a par, excuse the pun, with, with, with Kevin Magnussen. Mm -hmm. How do you see that car now? Uh, all 2017, the, I would guess. I mean, the, 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 the car is, is pretty hard to drive. I mean, it's, it's evident. And I think I'm sure lots of the issues that Palmer's been having this year is it's, he's come into a, to a team with a car that's very hard to handle. It's very much... As we saw from Kevin Shunt at Spa. Exactly. You know, it's, it's a car that bites back. Uh, it's not got that balance that the race drivers like. And it's because this car really is, you know, it's a compromise. It's got a bit of last year's gearbox. It's a bit of this year. They're also obviously trying to focus on rebuilding the team, especially uh, starting in 2017. So this car really is just a, you know, we'll run what we can. And you get very much get the feeling that the, that car and the team have been left to soldier on through this year. But I, why they focus on 2017 and beyond. Yeah, but I think it's impressive, going back to what we were saying in, an, in another video about mm -hmm. the progress Renault have made with their engine, as we can see with the Red Bull, that they're yeah. also doing, we shouldn't forget, they're also doing this team as well. And it adds to the, mm -hmm. the strength and the depth of Renault's involvement in Formula One. And, and yeah. all credit to them for yeah. struggling through this period the way they are. I mean, I think it's, it's what, what's rewarding is that Renault have come back with yeah, a large degree of commitment to the sport. So it's not evident this year, but you know, you know, you know from speaking to the team, speaking to people in the paddock, that Renault have got a massive recruitment drive on. They're desperate to get more people and engineers to bolster a team that was depleted really so badly over that winter at sort of 2013 when it seemed that everybody yeah. had left the team uh, suddenly. So they're trying to build the team up. Um, it's not evident right now, but you know, but over at Endstone, you can see that 
you know, the whole Renault and the Renault Sport package is really starting to build together to be this massive empire again. And yet I think other teams could start to be worried by, you know, the Enstone operation of Renault uh, with their own car in years to come. And, you know, 2017 gives them a big opportunity to take a step from where they are now to be up at the sharp end, potentially. And how have Manor been doing in terms of development on their chassis? Well, again, Manor have really impressed over these past two years. Uh, If we kind of remember, you know, I actually went to their liquidation auction. (laughs) Uh, And now, you know, they're... they're What did you buy there? Uh, um, Lots of bits and pieces. (laughs) Um, uh, Most of it's up a mile off and most of it's on my my, my blog as well. Um, But they really have recovered incredibly well. They were a better team now than they ever were under the, Mm. you know, the Virgin and Mauritia. And... You know, John McQuillan designing the car, you know, with limited resources, you know. But this year's car's quite good. And they've got two very strong drivers, increasingly strong drivers, with, with Opera mm. really pushing Verlime mm. as well. They've got the Mercedes power unit in the back. They've obviously got lots of technical partnerships, and I think that's an area that's going to be quite pivotal for the team over the coming years, exactly what they do with um, their technical partners. And I think that potentially could change in line with some of their um, power unit manufacturers, for example. Uh, and yet the car's good. It's not at the pace at the moment, but it, they're starting to knock on Sauber's door. As sadly, Sauber do sort of drop back a bit. And again, it's a team that are doing all the little jobs right within their resources. So, great job from there. Well, in theory, increased resources at Sauber. Are we seeing any fruit from that additional? I don't think finance? we've. I don't think we've seen it yet. Obviously, they've been able to put some new parts on the car simply because they've got the money to literally buy the materials to make this stuff. This stuff was all designed long, long time ago. Uh, I don't think it's necessarily added the performance to the car that perhaps they would have liked. But you know, when you've only got one chance to design a front wing, um, it's not going to be the best wing ever. They're not going to chance to try lots of different ideas against each other. So they're naturally limited. But yeah, you can see that there is more resolve and the situation is much more stable at Salva. So again, you would have to look for 2017 for them to start to show the results of what's going on there. But it does seem to be a team that are in the process of rebuilding and let's hope that that is consistent and you know, is still backed up all the way through to the start of next year.